Hello, welcome to Air Rifle Pressing. Glad you can join me tonight. Here's my hunting journal of the Coyote number no. 6. This was two nights before the hunt, and I'm just zero checking my HW100, shooting the 16 grand Hades. So, this is about 30 yards. After a few shots, I was pretty happy with my uh, point of impact. And here's the first victim of the night. This guy was at 21 yards, shot him right in the body, and the Hades basically just top him through and no pass through. So I assume the Hades expand completely inside. So it's pretty devastating and it died quickly. So Hades claim another rat. So this guy was lucky. As I turned on the camera, I saw it and it left. But unfortunately, this guy came up and he was uh, pretty close, so I did my hold over and shot him in the body as well. And I'm sure that hit him in the heart and the lung. In this clip, I was anticipating a, a rat to show up on the ledge, like they always do. And here it was. It showed up, and I shot it as it was coming down. So that was perfect timing. So it wasn't busy at all t this evening, and I only shot three and saw five in total. So the number definitely low. And before I left, I saw a rabbit here. Since I needed more bait for the coyote, I decided to uh, take a shot at this guy. And he was about 35 yards away. The first shot went over his head because I didn't do the proper holdover. As you can see, it didn't disturb it, it just stayed put. So I guess it must have a death wish. So here I aim lower, right on the head. So the Hades put it down right away. I scanned to my right and I saw another rabbit. So I decided, why not? Let's uh, go for two for two. Instead, this guy was at 29 yards, which is perfect for my zero. Just wondering if I can get uh, two in a row, as I was feeling pretty confident. Again, the shot connected. And uh, Hades claim another one. So the trail cam captured me picking up two rabbits at about 8 o'clock. So it was time to quit as there wasn't too many rats. So what I did was collected the two rabbits and I took them home. So I can use them for bait on uh, Saturday. That was two nights from today. I figured I won't have time to shoot more rats since there weren't that many around. And here I only collected two out of the three rats. One got stuck inside a barn. And there are a couple of dead ducks that I had in my freezer. So hopefully the coyote will show up and uh, feed on them. As you can see here, at 4.27, one coyote showed up. He quickly took one duck and fled the area. I guess the den was pretty close by. 35 minutes later at about 5.03 a.m. The same coyote returned and it took a rat. So I was surprised that he didn't take off right away and he just stood on the side there for no reason. But later on he came back and took that rat. You can see he was just uh, looking around, probably just smelling and trying to find the scents. There were more coyotes in the area as I hear them howling all the time. But this was the only one that hang out this night. Maybe this was a territory. You can see it tried to grab another duck and took off. Again, he paused and hung around for a little bit. And then later, it was gone. And uh, looks like it took one of the rats and went back to the den. Maybe uh, feeding its young or something. Four minutes later, at about 5.09 a.m., it came back as the trial cam captured the footage. So my guess is the den is definitely close by, within two minutes away. This is three minutes later, it was back. And then it uh, looked like he grabbed the second rat and it was gone again. So this is at 5.32 a.m., 20 minutes later. So it looks like he's working on the second duck. 
as you can see it was more relaxed and less wary so what I should have done was uh, study these footages closely before the night that I hunt then would have uh, known what to prepare nine minutes later about 5 41 so he came back again looking for more food but all the baits already gone and then uh, it took off shortly and then at 5.45 it came back this one is a lot closer to the camera so he was still looking for free food definitely he was hanging around here for about an hour and uh, 25 minutes so this was the next morning at about the same time the same coyote came back looking for more food so this is definitely great information gathered from a trail cam just knowing the time frame so my plan is to start the hunt on uh, Friday night. So this was Saturday morning. I retrieved the uh, trail cam and then I went up to the loft and tried to check my zero. And I'm shooting the HNN 25 grand Gen 2 slugs with my FF impact and the PAR 007S. The distance to the target was about 28 yards away. That's where I decided to set up the bait. The orange circle was about three quarter inch and I was shooting off a tripod seated. Here I set up a spinner and that's about half inch just to confirm and also use it as a marker. In the back there about 35 yards away I had another spinner because the coyote was recorded sitting around this area in the previous night so I decided to uh, do a point of impact check as well so I decided to take one more shot just to make sure I hit the bullseye and here it was so my impact was good to go so the fence there is 40 yards from my shooting position so this is where the coyote come in and out so I left and I plan to return in the early morning. So this was Saturday night at 11 o'clock. So I couldn't sleep. I was going to come here at about two o'clock, but I decided to just come and set up the bait. Probably a mistake because uh, I had to wait four hours before my first sighting. Here I used a steel rod to pin down the second rabbit, hoping that the coyote will pause and stay on the spot longer. Great planning, right? However, things didn't go as according to plan. After four hours of waiting in the cold, everything I had planned did not come into play. Mistakes were made, as you shall see. So this was at 12.05 a.m. Nothing happened like after an hour of sitting in the dark. But I spotted two ducks walking in the field, so I decided to just uh, film them and watch what they do. These ducks were off limit. It's very hard to spot any target in the dark like this. You can see pretty raindrops on the back of the ducks. So the ducks will serve as my live decoy. Um, they did return about 3 o'clock and they did alert me when a coyote was trying to pounce on them. They flew away and they were unharmed. At 2.29 a.m., that was three hours later, I spotted a rabbit with my binocular, my Nikon. So I turned on my NV200 to record the area. So you can see it's a great unit to have. You can see pretty wide field of view. My plan was to use this to record as a secondary camera to get extra footages. However, it didn't go as planned. Because I think I spooked the coyote when I was trying to turn on the unit when I first spotted the coyote at about 3.27 a.m. So this is the same footage looking through my PAR 007S mounted on my, H my impact. So you can see the field of view is very tight because the helix is 6x and the PAR 007 has a built-in zoom of 4x. So that makes it 24x zoom. 
so definitely way too close for a 30 to 40 yards range. I have since ordered a new Helix 2 to 16, so that hopefully will help me see a, a wider view and uh, give me a better chance to hunt this uh, coyote to spot them quickly. Hopefully I'll receive my uh, new scope soon. Trail cam captured the first sighting of the coyote at about 3.15 a.m. That was my first mistake. I turned on the NV200 and I think the coyote must have hurt me and left. So you can see my trail cam here. I'm not trying to get my scope cam. I tried to find it and of course I couldn't see anything. I didn't turn on the external infrared because I didn't want to spook the coyote. So what you see here is just the infrared from the trail cam. I never had a chance because it was gone. Second sighting of the coyote came at about 3.49 a.m. And again, I spotted my Nikon binoculars. So I decided to just watch it and see what it does before grabbing my gun. As you can see, it was moving around constantly. And I was really surprised it didn't come to the bait at all. So looking at this, I wish I would have grabbed my gun and tried to uh, put the scope on it. Because it was stationary for a bit here. I might have had a chance to shoot. I guess that was my mistake number two. And then it disappeared quickly. So this is what I would look like if I didn't turn on my infrared. It's super dark and I can barely make out anything. So definitely useless. So third sighting at about 425. And it was still reluctant to come closer to the bait. So I believe it kind of sensed something wasn't right. And it was very alert and cautious. You can see I tried to find it with my gun and I was actually going in the wrong area, wrong direction. So it was still standing there but I couldn't see anything. I just tried to find my bait station where the spinner was. You can imagine I was cold and tired and the fatigue mine just uh, I wasn't focused. So fourth and final sighting at 437. So I click on my infrared on my gun. And I think that spooked it. He heard my noise, he looked up, and then it was gone. So too many what-ifs went through my tired mind. The opportunity was there, but I just uh, messed up. I wasn't prepared. I had to admit defeat, but um, I learned my lesson, and I have to come up with a better plan next time. So this guy already won this time. But I'm not giving up and I'll be back to redeem myself. Stay tuned and thanks for watching. Cheers.